All right, what is good, you guys? Um, we're gonna be using camera audio because uh, my computer is currently doesn't have a graphics card, so it's not gonna turn on. So we're gonna be using my mic, uh, camera's mic. Uh, so apologize for that. So I've already gotten the cooler taken off. As you can see, um, this is a 980 Ti G1 gaming uh, gigabyte. Um, at the time, it was one of the more expensive 980 Ti's you could buy. And uh, we're gonna be strapping a water cooler to it because it's noisy as fuck. So, um, here's the cooler, removed already. Um, if you needed to look up a tutorial on how to pull a GPU cooler off of a GPU, you should probably not be doing this. So I'm not gonna show it, like I said, because if you, if you need to look up a tutorial for how to pull it off, it's literally um, four, seven screws. Um, these three, and then, you know, the ones around the die. So they're already removed. Um, I will say this though, on this specific model of card, there are some backplate screws that I would suggest leaving in, which are the, uh, right here is the back part of them, but the screws are right here. Leave those in, otherwise this card is no longer hooked up to the backplate and it just sags, as you can see right here, it's already getting some sag, but once we screw the new cooler on, um, it'll hold it in place here. And then if you don't have these two screws in right here, um, the literally the end of the GPU will sag away from the backplate. So leave that in. I saw that from a video that another guy had posted about this card. Um, his video wasn't very in depth, so we're gonna hope to get a little more in depth than uh, than he did. So here's the the GPU. As you can see, the die I've already cleaned it. Um, I, I cleaned it with this. It's it's a hand cloth and rubbing alcohol and then Q-tips. And uh, that's, that's how I clean all of my computer components. That or I run them under the sink. One of the two. All right, so um, here's the NZXT Kraken thingy, G10 Kraken. So I have already had this installed. I pulled it all apart to redo the installation as well as I got some of the heat sinks I was waiting on. I got really impatient and uh, I ordered separate types of heat sinks for the memory chips and for the BRMs. The ones for the VRMs took like weeks to get here, so I ended up taking the ones I got for the GPU, which are these, and cutting them in half so they're small, and as you can see, they fit on the VRMs now uh, without any issues. The ones that uh, fit for the chips are, are, you know, twice the size of that, so they didn't really fit too well. So um, I got some new ones for the VRMs, don't worry you guys, I'll be putting all the links to what I picked up in the description, um, so you guys know what types of cooling you should put on these, because the 980... Uh, G1 Gaming one does not come with a full plate over the whole thing. If you look at the cooler, um, the copper plate for the um, GPU die is actually what cools the memory. And uh, then you also have a plate running along right here that cools the VRMs. Uh, very good design if you never plan on removing the cooler. But um, if you pull the cooler off, you suddenly all of a sudden have all these chips um, that are no longer going to be getting cooled. Uh, as far as uh, necessity, to, necessity to cool them, uh, maybe if you're running at stock speeds, you'd be okay, uh, but if you want to do any sort of overclocking on your card, I would definitely suggest getting some, some cooling on the VRMs um, at the very least. So the first ones, I got a bunch of these right here, I guess the links will be in the description. Uh, these are what I would order for the VRMs, if my camera will focus on it. Boop. Focus. No, you want to. So you can see the chips right here. Um, they're tall. And uh, the thing I have about that is when this goes on, uh, it kind of hits on this. I'm not sure how much it's going to or if it's going to. Um, but if it does end up hitting on it, then I might be cutting some more of those other ones up to use. But I have noticed that these ones stick really well. Uh, the other silver ones I had didn't stick too well. So we'll just go ahead and start putting these on. So literally, you just get the chip you want it on and stick it on. Um, another note for these, when you're putting these, these things on, uh, don't wiggle them around. When you put them on, stick them on and leave them there. Don't kind of do like a wiggle back and forth to try to center them or straighten them because uh, that'll actually weaken the adhesive extremely quickly, believe it or not. Um, so literally, try to put it on as straight as you can. Push it down nice and firm-like and then just leave it there. Don't don't wiggle it around because you wiggle it around, you'll end up uh, you'll end up loosening the uh, the uh, adhesive on the bottom. One of them in the bag didn't have a little sticker on the adhesive, so that one's ruined. So I ordered uh, bags of 40 and 50, I believe. 40 of uh, the memory chip ones, 50 of the 
um, VRM ones and the simple reason for that is just because in case I mess up I guess so you can already see they're starting they don't want to stick on very well so I did have one of the chips fall off um, when I first put the card together and that's because I put one of them on and wiggled it around too much so it wasn't sticking right uh, all I did was I replaced it and uh, after I replaced it it never fell off again and that was the last of it um, they were actually when I was pulling them all off they were actually stuck on pretty good like they don't they don't want to come off once you get them on there and stick them good and then get the card warmed up and let it cool down a couple times these actually don't come off that easy um, in fact if you are removing them off of anything I suggest twisting it and not just pulling it because if you just pull it you run the risk of uh, uh, if it's stuck on there good enough pulling your chip straight off of the board which I mean it, it, that would be kind of tough to do but I'm not I'm just saying it is definitely possible for that to happen so let's continue laying these chips down so there's the first row now I see a lot of people put them on the other side of these little uh, chokes so I'm gonna do it too but the only problem that I have with this is that like I said um, these chips are lower um, it's hard to tell but the chips on this side are actually raised up a little bit and when I was doing some testing these ones were kind of touching the bottom of that cooler um, these don't have any type of cooling on them though um, from the stock cooler literally there's there's nothing on these but uh, in the videos I've seen people put the cooler the the heat sinks on these so I'm gonna do it too just because I have enough but if it is interfering with the cooler um, I will be pulling them off because I'm not going to have it interfere with my GPU die cooler especially because like I said these uh, these specific chips right here aren't even cooled by the GPU or by the uh, cooler the stock cooler so I'm not really too worried about them but like I said if I have it here I might as well put them on them right might as well alright so quick side note on um, these chips so as you can see how one is actually taller than the other by a good amount uh, that's what I was talking about. You can actually see it now that the uh, uh, coolers are on there, the little heat sinks. So, um, side note, if it's one of these falls off, replace it. Don't try to stick it on. If you accidentally get the bottom of these covered or you touch it with your finger, just replace it because you want that as sticky as possible because you don't want one of these falling off. And uh, honestly, that's why I just bought a whole bunch of them to make sure that just in case um, I'd have extras. So, um, also when you're putting these on, Make sure you're not touching it against anything. As you can see, there's like little metal contacts on this little choke thingies right here. Um, there's a little metal contact in there. Make sure you're putting the heat sink far enough away from it to where it's not going to touch that. Basically, you want to make these are metal um, or aluminum, I believe. I can't remember. But they are conductive, so you want to make sure that you're strictly not touching anything metal. You just want to put it on the top of the chip and leave it like that. So as you can see, there's a gap in between here. Um, between the chips and these other chips and that's because you can see there's little metal contacts on the ends of those and you don't want to touch those um, so basically it's common sense you guys it's metal uh, don't touch it to anything um, that's gonna have current running through it um, it's simple as that so the next chip sets are we're gonna be doing are the memory ones and then we're gonna actually be installing the cooler All right, for the next ones we have these so you can measure your chips if you want but generally all the chips are the same um, these are 10 by 15 millimeter uh, memory chips. Um, the ones on the 8800 GTS on my wall are also 10 by 15. So they're, I'm going to go ahead and on a limb and say generally they're all the same size. So um, I believe these right here are like uh, 10 by 13 or 12 by 14 or something like that. Um, but it is definitely enough to cover the full die. Um, if not, I guess you could just strap, you know, several of, one, of these to them, um, the black ones, if you really wanted to. Um, it looks like they would fit. I mean, I guess you could just put two of them on top of it and just call it a day. Um, I guess that would work if you really want to do that. I mean, a heat sink's a heat sink. And these will have a fan. Oops, one of them fell off. Um, it was the one that fell off are ones that I've already applied, so they're not sticky anymore. I actually fucked up and pulled them off. So anyways, um, I guess you could do that if you wanted to. They also make them in different colors. I made it a purpose, uh, point to get the black ones, of course. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, you just got to run an eBay search, that's where I found these. So we're going to go ahead and use these silver ones on the memory chips. And basically you just line it up as best as you can and then just push it down. Like I said, don't wiggle them back and forth because that kind of fucks with the adhesive on it. Um, and will make them more prone to falling off. But I will say I did run a bunch of these for about a week um, 
on the card already because I was waiting for the other, the black ones to come in. They hadn't come in yet, but I was eager because that's just me and that's just how I roll. Um, they were not easy to get off when I was pulling them off. Like I said, do the twisting method and not the pulling method if you ever need to get them off. Um, they were they were stuck on there pretty good. So um, literally, like I said, line them up. These are pretty much a perfect fit. The measurements for the ones that I took, I just measured them and then hopped on there and, and found a heat sink. Um, if you guys don't know this too, any chipsets on your motherboards or anything like the little square chipset, the the South Bridge. If it, if you got one of those motherboards that gets really hot on those, but doesn't have a uh, heat sink on them, like for instance the um, Z400 motherboard I bought from the HP workstation, um, you can actually just measure the chip and then go buy a heat sink for it and they're basically just one with a thermal adhesive on the bottom of it to stick it to it and you're good to go. They make them in all sizes, they offer them on Newegg, you can find them on eBay, Amazon, um, they're all over the place on the internet so you shouldn't have a problem finding any of them. Um, but like I said, the number one thing to do with these chips is to not wiggle them once you put them on. Put them on and then just push them down and let them be. You wiggle them, you, you run the risk of loosening the adhesive and uh, they might fall off while in operation. Like I said, luckily my uh, there's nothing underneath my graphics card so when one of the chips fell off um, and it wasn't one over the fan so it didn't like fling it all over the place. When it fell off it wasn't a problem but that was due to me uh, wiggling the chip around or wiggling the uh, heat sink around uh, after I had already pushed it down which loosened up the adhesive and then it basically just never sticks the same after that so um, you get you get that one chance to just put them down as straight as you can get them and then just leave them like that so there we go there's our heat sinks on there uh, literally just give it a, a quick push and make sure that they're all on they're good and as you can see they're not they're not gonna fall off they're they're on there it's, they're not coming off like I said, as long as you push them on and uh, don't wiggle them around after they've already stuck to their spot, uh, you'll be good to go. So I'm going to hope to God that the clearance on this is good enough for when we stick this on there. Because um, as you can see, it'll literally sit on top of them and it's touching them right now. So uh, if they do touch and as long as it's not too much pressure and it doesn't look like it's um, uh, obstructing contact with the die, I'll leave it anything that's just an extra uh, more heat transfer so we have our little NZXT bracket now I did have to scrape uh, I bought this used it was like 20 bucks 25 so I, I had to scrape the little adhesive off of here um, it's like a little padding for the back of the car and that is because I want to keep my back plate and uh, with with that padding on there it was having a lot of trouble it was having a lot of trouble um, with the back plate so uh, we're gonna make sure I line it up right because I actually didn't line it up right last time it was upside down because I'm special um, so these little bolts right here or the nuts on the ends of these actually fit into the holes in the back plate really well so if you line it up right and just kinda shimmy it around it should just go in and uh, you should be able to line it up to put the bolts in there as well to kinda hide the bolts if I can remember which one that these are supposed to be in though there we go I think that was it. So if you can see the bolts actually go into those holes and start sitting flush. Now you want to make sure that you get them all the way in with this specific model of card. I'm not saying that all cards um, will. Also while you're doing this be careful not to touch any of the little heat sinks that you just put on. I have actually knocked quite a few off um, from doing this and uh, had to go back and re-put a new one on which is why I suggest buying extras. Um, there's some thermal paste here. I don't know there's not thermal paste on my fingers so I don't know where that's coming from but whatever um, so yeah that's why I suggest buying extra because it does happen the moment when your memory card fills up and your camera doesn't let you know I uh, had a lot of random videos saved on there that I've never taken off because I haven't posted any videos so yeah um, so we got our back plate on um, the back right here uh, we have all of our chips on we're basically ready to install this alrighty so now that we got our chips in place and all that good stuff um, or our heat sinks in place. Make sure we're free of debris on the die, which I don't know where my rack went. There it is. Basically, I'm just going to give it a dust off and just blow at it and get a little more of this since it's been sitting for the last like 20 minutes while I was doing some other stuff. So, we're going to go ahead and clean it off again. Make sure it's all ready for a new application of paste and to have the cooler slapped on it. So I got a giant tube, I invested in one, um, 
big ass tube of MX4. Um, because I use a lot of thermal paste, so might as well just get the biggest one. So I always cake on a lot of thermal paste on the GPU, um, just because it's an exposed dye. So I do like this fucking crazy X pattern. That's way too much paste, as you guys can tell, but that's just how I've always done it. To make sure that there's no part of the dye, if it gets all over the insides of it, oh well. Um, I'll just clean it off next time I pull it off, which hopefully won't be anytime soon, because this is annoying. Um, so this... Definitely adds, you know, three more fan headers you guys need. You need one for the pump and one for this. I'm also going to add um, the fan that this comes with. This is a really quiet fan. Even at 100%, it's quiet. So, um, we'll go ahead and move this back so I could get the pump centered on this thing. So, it's really uh, kind of a hassle to set up. Because shit just gets in the way and there's a lot of wires. So first thing you're going to do is drop your pump into this. And you're going to kind of want to make sure you put it on the right way. That's for sure. Um, you're going to want to line your hoses up. As you can see, I have a zip tie on my hose already. If you can see. I'm not 100% sure if you can. But uh, hopefully you can. So um, we're basically just going to line our pump up with how I want these hoses to run. Um, and if I can get it to line up, I believe it's right here. So that should hold it in there. So there's little notches that this hooks onto, and right here. And then basically I can slide my tubes in down like that. And that's how I've always hooked mine up, um, to have the tubes kind of hidden. Um, but that is definitely dependent on where you're putting this radiator. If you're putting the radiator up in your rear exhaust fan you definitely don't want it coming out here because obviously this is not enough for it to reach to the rear exhaust um, but mine goes at the front of my case so that is why I do it like that um, we're gonna make sure our little base plate is clean because it's gonna get no debris on there and then we're slowly just gonna slap this thing on um, make trying to keep it as uh, leveled as possible <laughs> Which, like I said, this is uh, definitely an annoying thing to do. This could not have been a sketchier application. Now, you obviously do not want to over-tighten this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm checking the clearance because I remember I was telling you guys that VRM heat sink looked like it was going to fucking touch it. It looks to be okay. Alrighty, I call that complete contact as much as it's going to get. So, um, that's what it looks like. That's the annoying process of strapping one of these on. And then now we get to go through the annoying process of putting it into my computer, um, which I'm not going to film because it's annoying, it takes forever, and quite honestly it's plug and play and different with everyone's cases. But that's installing one of these, we're going to cut to uh, temperatures and overclocks and all that stuff, um, and my overall opinion after this.